everybody. Uh, today I will be talking mostly about nodes and links as well, so which can be created in a viral matic medium, either by winding these defect lines around volatile particles or just by creating uh, freestanding nodes inside of steric droplets. So here you can see just an example of such a nice uh, artistic expression actually of some combination of folates uh, or spherical particles and some winding of these insulation lines around you have these three angles presented here which are important in the uh, creation of knots actually in these systems and you can see some differently shaped particles which can be also useful to make kind of uh, Explanations. And here below you can see kind of general styling decorated with the uh, pneumatic film. And this somehow was put together with Simon Chopper and it was then also selected as a front cover with a, a thin tissue of soft matter just uh, recently uh, was bottom and this thin tissue was focusing on uh, the geometry and topology of uh, soft materials. So you can find uh, interesting papers also by Greg and Jonathan, for example, on this issue. And you're welcome to actually read. So, uh, I will start actually by presenting some examples of knots in everyday life and also in science. So in different fields of research where knots were studied during let's say two or three recent decades and uh, then I will show you how to knot the defect lines by using optical tweezers in a mixture of uh, pneumatic and uh, spherical silicon particles actually my name so Talets is somehow also associated with, with weaving because the meaning of my family name means uh, the weaver <laughs> so it's kind of fun yeah, to, to relate things I was doing actually experimentally. And then I will show you that uh, these knots actually can be represented also uh, by graphs and surfaces. So there are different ways of finding out what kind of topological objects you actually have uh, in these systems and what kind of classification and identification methods you can use actually to find out uh, which type of knot you, you're actually looking at. Uh, you can actually also create um, a desired knot or link by following uh, some simple design principles uh, in these systems, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we will be focusing on two uh, recent, actually, uh, theoretical or simulation, numerical simulation works by, by Simon Chopin and David Sech, so from Professor Human's group, uh, where they have shown how you can make three dimensional entangled discrimination networks out of these defect lines and also how you can achieve kind of three standing knots in posterior droplets. So these are mostly the papers that uh, recently published on these topics, and you can check this for <coughs> Okay, so everybody, I think, uh, knows how knots look like and how to tie a knot. Actually, you need some kind of line or strand or rope, uh, which has to be the angle with the minimum of space. And usually, what is typical for knots is that you make some several crossings, actually. Uh, and uh, usually, just to define it in a mathematically more appropriate way, you don't have to join the start and the ends together so that you have a closed loop which is sitting in a three-dimensional space. And if you have, for example, more than one strand, maybe two or more, then you call this not usually a link. And uh, just by looking at it from different directions, it can be seen quite differently. And we will see that there are also different ways how to distinguish different knots from each other. But one typical uh, characteristic of a knot is the number of crossings they have. Uh, 
So people are actually interested in knots for a very long time, um, just by when they went this away for the make the textiles and uh, the ropes, for example, and here is just, we are just present a few, a few interesting examples from the history. So this Kipos was kind of invention of Incas, old Incas, and they were using uh, this type of knots, so on ropes, to, to record the different information. Actually, they did not invent kind of alphabet, so they were not writing or, or communicating in this way, which we are used actually now. Okay, then we were talking, of course, to each other, but the very important information that we're using is kind of you no know, ropes and uh, also decimal system. And uh, they started to use this actually 3,000 years before Christ, I think, so this kind of communication uh, was then in use for more than 4,000 years, actually. Uh, another example which you can see here uh, are just Celtic knots, which also originate from the 9th century. So there is a famous book of Kells, uh, where you can find many such a nice drawings, and you can see this intricate uh, tangles of yeah, very complicated shapes, and uh, so it's hard to say what was the purpose of this, uh, some aesthetic or, or religious uh, reasons maybe could be behind, uh, but uh, they were doing this so usually just by one single uh, line going around, uh, making very, very complicated shapes uh, in space. And here you can see another example of Chinese knot, which is still in use also today, so just like for, for, for a lot, for how to say so, so uh, people in China, I think, are, are used to put this uh, around the houses or, or just uh, bringing them together uh, wherever they go. Uh, so one of the biggest masters in making knobs actually were the sailors and also the builders, and you can find books uh, where they are presenting, uh, I think, more than a thousand different kinds of knots which you can make uh, out of ropes. And uh, of course, different knots also can uh, be used for different purposes. So, in everyday life, actually, we are using knots and shoes to make hair braids, for example, also to, to tie uh, your ties, actually. And uh, I think that most of us learned how to tie a knot before we learned how to read and write, actually. So uh, we were using them, yeah, maybe not thinking about them so much, but they are present in our life uh, every day. And uh, there was also a study that you can, how, how many ways, in how many ways actually you can uh, make a knot on your tie. And uh, you can find also a book published like 10 years ago or something like this. Uh, however, there are only four or five ways <laughs> of, uh, of trying to tie and should be used. So if you're interested uh, to explore more, so you can find uh, many different books related to different uh, uh, topics or applications of knots uh, in different parts of our life. Uh, so the motivation for, for a scientific search or yeah, to explore more systematically how knots can form at, uh, for example, a molecular level, uh, perhaps started with, uh, with DNA, when people were trying somehow to, to make knots and to reproduce them, to see them uh, by different kinds of microscopy, or directly or indirectly, and you can see that already in 1985 it was possible to, to get some images uh, of DNA knots and to study the motion of, of different knots actually in, in, in uh, Argos uh, gels uh, by dielectrophoresis and similar. And uh, the question was also how, so how to untangle DNA. And we heard uh, in the lectures in the previous week that uh, there are kind of uh, enzymes, topoisomerases, topo which are specialized for these applications. 
So in uh, this case, actually, the knots are something which we do not want to happen during mitosis when the cells get divided. And uh, in this case, the knots usually cause uh, problems uh, and are not so desired to happen. Uh, so people are also studying knotted DNA from back cap sites and so how DNA can be packed in kind of a spherical uh, environment or inside the cosmohedral shapes. And they were actually also trying to, to tie a simple knot just by using optical grizzers. Uh, and so it's possible to realize. And uh, more recently, I think that focus shifting from DNA molecules more, more to proteins where you can also find knots and uh, in all these uh, complicated conformations they have distinguished by several uh, different parts other than the knot. So you can check maybe this uh, uh, the recent review on biophysics uh, of nothing uh, for more examples. So the other aspect, uh, how to induce uh, some complicated topological objects, is by doing this uh, with uh, chemical synthesis. So chemists are also interesting, interested actually to, to create uh, different kinds of molecular structures uh, which have interesting topology and somehow we started also like maybe almost 20 years, 15 years ago. Uh, so by doing the synthesis, by mixing different kinds of, uh, uh, of metal ions, for example, and organic molecules, uh, and they were able to produce, for example, three polymers and uh, many rings, and more recently they were able to, to do this uh, synthesis, a single step actually, synthesis of uh, pentafoil uh, knot. Uh, so it's quite difficult actually to combine all these ingredients and uh, to make the process where, where all these different uh, molecules bind together in such a complicated way. So here uh, uh, you can also find books uh, where people are discussing the different procedures how to get headlines or chains of uh, interlinked uh, molecular rings or how you can create uh, different kinds of knots. So it's not so much focus on uh, producing, I don't know, so such a large diversity of different knots, but you, you're focusing on uh, particular examples, but you can produce them in, in billions and in, in really uh, high quantity. And this might be useful, I don't know, maybe to, to take uh, some care of nanoparticles to clean some samples uh, which are polluted with some undesired um, ingredients and which could then bind to some of these uh, complicated shapes and can be then just filtered out for the dump, for example. Uh, we've heard quite a lot about uh, also doing or studying knots in, in fluid dynamics uh, from uh, William. And I just uh, show you these things here. So it's just a recognition of these coronal loops which happen uh, on our sun from time to time. And it's also interesting to study uh, the helicity, vorticity of knotted flux tubes. So it was studied since uh, late 60s, I think, already. And there were also then numerical simulations of linking uh, different vortex knots in ideal and then later in viscous fluids. And uh, the most beautiful example were just published uh, recently by William and uh, co workers. Uh, so, how to produce this kind of knotted structures in, in water, actually. Uh, and uh, there are also some examples of uh, mobility of different kinds of knots. So, here are more macroscopic, actually. Uh, in the fluid, so like sedimentation or, or electrographic uh, motion, and this can give you some insights also to, to the behavior of DNA in some fluids. So it's just scaled up everything, but it can give you some, some uh, 
answers also in how between CDN and MOS can be uh, behaving actually in such an environment. So, one uh, interesting uh, research area are also electromagnetic fields and uh, optics where you can create uh, or induce uh, mounted textures. So, by shaping actually the face uh, patterns of light and uh, or by interfering also different uh, laser beams together and uh, by doing uh, that you can achieve actually the areas of uh, null intensity so where, where you get uh, 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 destructive interference and these areas can be then kind of braided for together so in, in the end you can achieve kind of uh, uh, different models as well in these examples and uh, okay here we, here we actually start with some solution of uh, these paraxial wave equations so you, you know impose the structure in the beginning so then you can create uh, this uh, in the medium actually or just by, by the interference of bins okay I think that William was also discussing uh, several examples uh, how you can uh, link uh, magnetic and electric fields all together with, uh, with the pointing uh, line fields and uh, then study the time evolution of uh, this imposed structure so you can also start with some kind of uh, hot link or hot vibration which is then getting entangled uh, but still stable in, in, in space and uh, it will be interesting yeah, also to, to do these things uh, experimentally so to, to post uh, such kind of solutions, maximal equations uh, and use them actually to, to create some interesting uh, you know, working fields, let's say, as well you know, in space or in some material. Okay, so uh, you can also try to get kind of Entanglement uh, by using the phase transitions. Here are just a few examples from the past, also uh, from the field of liquid crystals, where, especially actually, the work of Yves Polygon 40 years ago when he was studying uh, different atmospheric materials uh, and uh, doing different kind of phase transitions and observing uh, many transient structures which uh, possess. So here you can see an example of uh, two plane rings that were slowly or relatively fast, I think that was quickly uh, relaxing and then disappearing in the medium. So he was talking also about uh, various like uh, destinations in such materials and uh, we also saw this work by Neil Burok and also by uh, Mark Bowie where they were studying um, defect coarsening and dynamics after the temperature crunch in relation to cosmological scenarios. So, kind of cosmology in the laboratory. Okay, and uh, more recently actually uh, people got interested also to, to use uh, paralematics uh, to create different kind of cosmological structures. So, we heard a lot about forums in the ones and also Paul's presentations. Uh, so in this case, we were not dealing really with knots, but it was also kind of a trigger to explore more intensively uh, defects which can be created in liquid crystals. Then another example was just this mutual entanglement of uh, not that shaped level particles and defect loops which happen to to um, to be realized in that way and there are also interesting works actually by Garrett Alexander and his co-worker uh, so they are studying for example knots uh, in relation to non-orientable surfaces so if you insert kind of Mobius strips into the liquid crystal and try to get or find out what kind of defect loops can be entangled around uh, all these uh, structures, all these 
one example, and another is, uh, is one where they're also trying to find out uh, what kind of topological classes uh, are realizable actually in the method for the crystals. And I think that this paper should come out just in a week or two in a PRL. Uh, okay, so one of uh, the reasons why why to work with monster topology is also get uh, some awards for this, for example, and this is uh, an example of Iggy Nobel, who was awarded to, to Dorian Raymer and uh, Doc uh, Smith uh, for the work on actually, uh, so what they were doing, they were, they were otherwise uh, working on, on DNA and disentanglements, but they got an idea to, to actually to uh, agitate elastic uh, stripes in kind of a washing machine, so it was like a cubic box, it was rotated, and then they were trying to find out uh, how, how, how complicated uh, knots, let's say, they can get uh, just out of this. So you can see that, uh, I mean, they showed quite a large diversity, up to 11 crossings, I think, so they found several. Or 100 different types of knots, I think, in this case, uh, they somehow uh, uh, explain that uh, if you make some movement of some long uh, stripe, you get entanglement very easily. And we experience this also with all kinds of cables and hairs and so on. Uh, okay, also in my case, I was awarded actually this Man Bound Prize uh, two years ago, that was related to this work on knots. And next week, my colleague Simon Chopar is also going to receive <laughs> actually the same kind of award uh, at the International Liquid Crystal Conference. Uh, so, this is also kind of motivation that uh, not fields and uh, yeah, not in different environments are kind of a relatively interesting topic to start. Okay, so now if I return back to this system of pneumatic colloids. Uh, I was talking a lot about uh, this uh, assembly processes and uh, elasticity mediated interactions between uh, spherical particles and uh, we were talking about two different kinds of uh, director field which can happen uh, in, in confined colloidal uh, systems. Uh, you remember this elastic level configuration and uh, polar where we have a certain ring and encircling the particle, and this kind of system will be interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, we are interesting also in this uh, uh, studies which I'm presenting today. So, just to remind you, uh, so this feedback loop which goes around the sphere actually has a, a threefold cross section. This is important, so we, have, we are dealing with minus one half discriminations. Uh, which are in this case uh, always closed uh, to loops. And uh, if we have more particles, we can find the discriminations around. So the particles start to share uh, the encircled loops in a more complex way. And in this case, we are talking about uh, pneumatic braids. And uh, they provide kind of power and like binding let's say, to different particles. And uh, we saw all of it before, at least in the case of uh, polyvinyl dimers, that uh, we can rewire uh, so these different uh, uh, combinations of entanglement quite uh, nicely by using optical traps. And the question is uh, whether we can actually classify or distinguish all these different things which will be coming up uh, in a reasonable manner. Okay, so what is different from before when we were looking at uh, spherical particles in a homogeneous field is that we are imposing some twist around them in this case. So we are using uh, uh, by half twist of the molecules from one side of the substrate to the other are turning by 90 degrees, either one direction or the other. So you can talk about left-handed or right-handed 
with the domains and when you insert uh, homeotropic spheres, so the particles which uh, refer perpendicular orientation of molecules on their surface inside such a uh, twisted space or twisted pneumatic field, uh, what, is, what happens is that uh, this Saturn ring which we saw before gets twisted as well. So this loop is not just a simple planar loop anymore, but it, it follows actually the twist of uh, the environment. And uh, just by looking what happens when you insert this uh, little dispersion into the liquid crystal cell, you can see that these rings, okay, you cannot see them very well, but you can see that separated loops actually get connected by just by material flow. Uh, so there is some tendency uh, to create actually entangled structures even without crunching the system from the isotropic phase, like you was thought, uh, like we have seen actually in the previous lecture where we had to do this uh, just by by opposing the phase condition. And this uh, loops uh, so entangled defects around the spheres are even better visible, I don't know whether here you can see, but I think you can, uh, under polarized light. So if you have cross polarizers, you can see quite nicely that uh, it looks so uh, above and below actually the particles and make some kind of crossings uh, in the middle. So what is up and what is down, this is one kind of important question and uh, you can answer this actually just by thinking uh, what is the orientation of the rubbing, so how the molecules close to the substrate are oriented on the bottom and on the uh, top surface. Uh, because you know that uh, defect line of this kind, so this one one half discrimination tends to orient perpendicularly to the orientation uh, on the substrate. And, uh, so you, you will have the same kind of actually crossings and the same kind of loops around uh, each particle everywhere. So if, if on the top you have this direction, this line tends to be in the horizontal uh, direction and on the other side, uh, just perpendicularly. So if you're looking at from, from the top or from the floris projection, actually, you can find that uh, each particle is uh, having a crossing. So what was then confirmed also by the medical simulations was that uh, changing the focus is boundary conditions of a homogeneous to non-homogeneous of twisted uh, environment uh, reverses actually the stability and the metastability stability of uh, separated and uh, entangled uh, uh, structures. So you can see that actually if you connect these two loops, which are now separated uh, one next to each other, it's uh, energetically more favorable to get connected with a longer loop. Uh, so it goes also by connecting the particle. And uh, it's not a big difference, okay, in, in energy, but still it happens relatively uh, easily, also in experiments. Uh, and as I said, in this case, you don't need really to, to change the phase, so to go from the pneumatic to the isotopic phase, but you can do this just by small mechanical or, or optical disturbance of defects. And uh, if you proceed actually to study all these systems more systematically, you can bring together several uh, particles. So here you can see some plant experiment just doing this by actually by moving laser beams of the focus of the laser beam by, by hand or mouse and trying to pull together more of these uh, little particles. So you can see this, you can operate this relatively quickly. Uh, so you can grab this elastic um, defects by the laser beam and you can pull them together and then also to connect to separated loops into more complex way. Particles connected together, you can add the fourth one and you can also change the, say, the relative arrangement of the neighboring spheres. 
And uh, looking what you have actually just just like this is uh, if you can think how many loops. The first thing is that you count uh, the number of the loops which uh, happen in, in different cases. So you can see that by just by adding one particle, so two particles together, or three particles together, you're just extending the, the length of this uh, entangled uh, exponential loop. But what you can do is also you can make a crossing in the middle, in between the particle, not just uh, on the particles. And on the other hand, uh, you can get also the structures where these loops get separated into two linked loops, like this example. So you can change actually the topology uh, of entangled uh, effects. So how to find out what, what you actually have? It's a relatively simple way for relatively small systems. Uh, it is known actually for almost 100 years that uh, by doing some planar moves, let's say it's called randomized moves, you can disentangle relatively complicated uh, uh, systems. And if you apply it, so this uh, sequence of random master moves to, for example, something like this. So you can imagine that here, at these crossings, you can put uh, particles, or you can take them away, and uh, then you reduce this problem of disentangling things in three dimensions of space to just two dimensional problems. So by just by uh, doing these moves, you can then get uh, simpler or vertical the projection of the knot, uh, uh, of the knot, for example, uh, in, in its minimal uh, projection, so where you have the minimal, minimal number of crossings. And such images you can find then in tables or in books, and thereby you can actually recognize uh, which kind of knots uh, you have in your system. And of course, in this case, what changes is only in geometry, but the topology stays the same because you're not cutting or, or reconnecting uh, the book in the sequence. So by doing such kind of operations, actually you can obtain a series of torus knots and links just by studying such kind of, uh, let's say, rectangular uh, particle arrays. And uh, just by redrawing, because you know what is up and what is down, so all the crossings are of the same kind. You can then reconstruct uh, actually the, the, the kind of uh, logical object which happens to entangle all these particles. And you can see that if you're adding just, uh, so you are just extending this, these rows by one particle, so you're adding one more crossing here, so all these crossings. Uh, Oops, at the edges, just uh, are uh, uh, erased. I mean, erased, uh, just you can undo it by the first randomized move. And uh, you see that you end up actually with alternating sequence of torus knots and links, just by adding the number of crossings along uh, this direction. So this is one kind of thing, and you can then uh, find uh, classification or uh, the names of all these kind of knots in, in books. If you are just presenting for examples, if you would be interested to read a little bit more about this theory, it was also new to me actually, so I had to learn all these things from scratch, because I did not have a plan actually to, <laughs> to start knots. So just happened, you know, it, it happens if you, if you turn, turn the glass plate by 90 degrees uh, <laughs> from what you're doing uh, before, you can discover quite interesting new things. And you have to study them more intensively. Uh, so I can show you two more movies, uh, just to manipulate maybe two pairs of all the connected uh, loops, so you can just locally apply uh, the, the heating uh, laser beam, you can then change uh, the connection with 
between these loops. And in, in the beginning, there were two separated loops and they were connected in a shape which was going just around uh, all the four particles. And now you can also create a crossing, actually, with the plants in the middle. And if you're using more and more particles, like we saw already, you can get more and more complicated structures. So in this case, you can assemble, uh, you see that this process is relatively slow and you have to be careful not to, to apply too high intensity in the laser beam and to yeah, manipulate it modestly or, or just in a moderate way uh, to get what you want and it's kind of a random process, I mean it's not really random but you can apply some preference to, to what you want to get at uh, different uh, uh, regions. So here is one example of figure of eight not actually uh, which obtained using ten particles. Or if you insert one more, you can switch to some more complicated so-called white hat link. But you can do also logically very simple structures by using a large number of particles, like in this example, where you have just a single defect line which is going up and down on all these large array of colloidal particles. But if you un unwind it, uh, you find out that it's just a simple circle. So unknown, which uh, can be done this way. So you might also ask uh, why we see these colors here and what do they mean? So I'll show you that actually out of these colors, so these are just uh, differently oriented uh, twisted pneumatic domains. Uh, so if you look at, at uh, the pneumatic on the cross polarizers and with insert optical representation plate, you can distinguish these two different perpendicular orientations uh, under the microscope, so they appear in two different colors. And what you see, so wherever you cross, you're crossing actually the discrimination line, so this minus one half discrimination, the orientation of the molecules turns by 90 degrees. So it happens always. You don't have to have a regular array of particles or something like that. So whenever you go across the discrimination line, uh, the twist of the molecules actually will switch from one orientation from left handed to the right handed. And just by looking at uh, such a structure, so you see this under the microscope, you can uh, reconstruct actually the shape or the topology of the loop which is entangled around. So you can recognize differently colored uh, areas and then you can place kind of vertices in the middle of these regions and connect these vertices across the crossings which happen in between. So here, 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 and here we have a crossing with the vertices in all these green areas and connect the dots. And this way actually we can get a graph and we can uh, apply different signs to different crossings. Okay, in this uh, case we have only one kind of crossings. And uh, in the end, we can obtain a signed planar graph, which is also related to knots. So of this schematics, you can find out uh, which kind of knot actually you, you, you have in your system. Here is one more example where we have the crossings also in between the particles. And uh, in this case, it's interesting that uh, you get negatively signed crossings only in between the particles and positively signed uh, connections uh, just for the crossings which happen uh, on the particles. So you can also do kind of randomized the proofs in this case and again then recognize uh, kind of a knot or link is entangled here. So you don't need to, to unwind uh, like before. Uh, of this different structure in between the mountains, or so just by applying all the sequences to randomize the most, but you can recognize this in a different way. There is one more thing actually, all of these colors you can 
consider these different regions as a top projection of a surface which contains all the twisted bands. Uh, and the crossings is something similar to cipher surfaces if somebody is more uh, uh, educated, let's say, in mean, these uh, logical topics. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it, we found out somehow that this surface is uh, oriented along in the, this associated graphic property, so that there are no all cycles in this case. And there was a very nice idea actually how to recognize this director field by Brian Chen and Tramitamian and uh, this technique actually of uh, coloring the surfaces of this so called Montreal Tom uh, construction was applied uh, for the first time in the case of the hot vibration, which one was presenting. And I think that we can use uh, this uh, uh, kind of presentation also in this case. Uh, so you construct the surface just by, by looking uh, how the local uh, orientation of molecules is changing according to some preferred direction. And in this case we can take as a reference uh, so direction uh, which, which points at 45 degrees according to the boundary substrate. So just in the middle molecules have to turn it have to turn by 45 degrees. And this is some reference direction and deviations from these directions are then uh, followed actually but by such a color build. And just by looking at these uh, colors and counting the number of terms of, of this wheel and such a structure, so you don't need actually any information of the director field. You just know that you're dealing with minus one half discriminations uh, where the director is uh, perpendicular to the line and you're just looking from top projection to the lines you can construct such a surface and practically get out all the logical information so you can find out what kind of uh, so what is the topological charge and uh, how much uh, this uh, structure is entangled so this is really kind of then Topological entanglement where, where, where you're entangling this uh, kind of point effect which are situated in the center of the particles and uh, the different lines which are linking around. So this is one more thing which I think is interesting. Or alternative way how to explain uh, these structures. Okay, so what is really nice in this system is that uh, these uh, wiring sites are situated actually in the middle between four particles, and as you remember, this construction by Simon, uh, you can identify them in three different angles, which preserve the continuity of the director field. And if you turn them by 120 degrees, you can reconnect the lines which are in between. And practically every combination of angles is allowed, so every knot in principle is possible if you are using large enough grid. And you can imagine that if you're dealing with P by Q particles, for example, you, you obtain uh, P minus 1 and uh, Q minus 1 tangles. And this gives you this, at each place, you can place three different tangles, so quite a large number of combinations. So in 4 by 4 grid, for example, particles, you can obtain almost 20,000 uh, different Formations. Because they are not topologically different, you have many uh, examples of different configurations with the same topology, but uh, this is the way how you can uh, go on by studying these things. So you can then uh, have a more complicated example and you can ask yourself, what is this? <laughs> and it's quite difficult, I mean, just to guess. Uh, so you have to do some analysis. Uh, Either by studying polynomials, I will show one example, or by just trying to entangle this uh, in, in space. Okay, so you have another uh, possibility actually in how to reconfigure these uh, tangles. So if you have, if you concentrate just on the region between the four neighboring particles, what can happen? You have two strands which can either cross this way, so we cannot get the other kind of crossings because we have fixed boundary conditions which prefer the direction of uh, this 
perfect lines uh, just in, in such time uh, it's, it's in this way. So then what can happen if these two strands can uh, cross or they can bypass each other in two different ways. And if you're changing these tangles just in one place, you can switch between different uh, topological objects. So you can have either knot or composite knot or, or link. So this is kind of a local surgery to be applied by all the fillers just by simply reconnecting these uh, different lines. And it fits well also with uh, this uh, proposal by Simon uh, when you are just rotating sort of tetrahedron that uh, is requiring sites. Okay. Uh, just to remind you about the structure of discrimination, so we are dealing with uh, three-folded uh, stripes, and uh, this brings you in uh, the twist and the right, uh, and it's, uh, eventually the self-linking number, which counts the terms of the director field profile, uh, around the closed loop, so you can imagine this as kind of a parallel transport, or people are also talking about geometric or very space, which which is very similar to this. So if you if you have a have a uh, normal reserve to the one uh, particular side of this surface, and it goes around, so you can find out how much it turns uh, before you are closing the loop. And by using just the number of the loops and the self-linking number, which is related, uh, of course, to these terms, you can classify them uh, different structures so on some fixed grids. So if you if you if you're dealing, for example, just by three by three particles, you can then uh, apply all these different permutations of uh, uh, tangles in different places and uh, find out uh, which structures and where they might happen. And this is of course also related to the conservation law which uh, was also developed by Simon uh, and to, to the uh, conservation of the blood pressure which has to be uh, conserved, of course. And uh, what we were studying next was somehow what happens if you're adding rows or columns to the already existing uh, grids. And uh, what is interesting is somehow that uh, if you increase the, the size of this colloidal grid, uh, of course you get more diverse structures, but uh, all what was already observed before is somehow, uh, I would say, uh, present also in the larger grid. So you have kind of a rarity of these uh, lattices. And, uh, okay, they shift a bit. In the, uh, Way, uh, so the same thing in number will change, of course, in this case, but still you're getting uh, nice examples. Okay, maybe just briefly to tell you about the Jones polynomial and identification of these knots. So, what you have to do is uh, actually to just uh, yes, well, this example, you have to uh, undo the crossings either in two ways. So this state or this state, and you, you're just looking at all the time the crossing which happened in your structure, and you're applying all the combinations uh, of this uh, untangled uh, state, and uh, then you apply just a simple, simple uh, arithmetics. So you have to multiply actually with different states and sum them up to get kind of a polynomial, so you have different uh, exponents here, and thereby you can search in uh, not databases or uh, catalogs, find out uh, which kind of knot it is. So you have different kinds of polynomials, Kaufman and the Jones polynomial is kind of the most, uh, one of the most known. Uh, and, uh, okay, this you can do up to some number of crossings, but later is the problem because uh, it's still a problem in mathematics so to find the uh, invariant which is distinguish actually all different knots. Okay, so just to finish with this topic is uh, 
what you can do, you can take one example of knots, for example, for Romeo rings. If you ask yourself how big a rail do I need to, to make it, and uh, then of course you have to calculate or to find out uh, the right combination of these angles on such a grid, and you can realize then this experiment. So we're doing this actually in such a 4x4 array. We found many different knots, so you can see here the rock scale, of course, you get many on modern examples or kind of simple knots, but it happens also that you find some quite complicated structure, especially with more uh, links, for example. Okay, uh, then these ideas were somehow extended also to three dimensions, uh, just in simulations or in theory, for example. So uh, the question was what happens if you put uh, more layers of these spheres and uh, this, what you get is kind of open structure, so which is permeated by, by, by a magnetic liquid crystal. And if you're focusing on FCC lattice uh, of these spec spheres, which were studied also experimentally more than 10 years ago, and uh, uh, of course we are again dealing with strong uh, confinement and homotropic uh, anchoring of the surface of the spheres. And what was Simon's idea somehow that you can. Uh, they compose the space between, between uh, the spheres into a network of cubes and tetrahedrons. And uh, so the question was how all these uh, discrimination lines, which are entering at the vertices of these two uh, simple objects, uh, could be arranged. So, and uh, there are actually seven unique states. You, we are not considering crossings of disclinations in the middle of these uh, uh, cubes because it's energetically not preferable so they try to avoid each other mostly <coughs> and you can see that uh, there are just uh, some of these different combinations which are possible to happen plus these three states which happen already before so inside the tetrahedron and uh, using just this uh, allowed uh, explanation arrangements in the voids, uh, you can then uh, yeah, start to study or to find out uh, also by looking at the local symmetries of these uh, building blocks, what can you get. Uh, so what Simon was doing is just numerically simulating different situations by relaxing these structures and then finding out the Energetically favorable combinations, of course, this was going without, I mean, just inside again some cubes without uh, edges. But the problem is in 3D you cannot really uh, connect things. Okay, you can, but uh, it's not very clear also mathematically uh, how, how you can close from all sides things. So it's kind of open system without boundaries, let's say, infinitely uh, large. And there is one other object which can fit actually in this uh, void. Uh, so this is the only remaining platonic uh, polyhedron which has also tripled symmetry axis and uh, is therefore compatible with this kind of discriminations. And uh, the question is, how many ways you can connect actually and then this uh, discrimination segments inside uh, the decahedron and you can see that this is a really, really big number uh, of almost 2,500 unique structures which you can obtain in this case this is just to show you how, how complexity in the system can quickly uh, grow or increase number of involved connections. Uh, so this is just another very nice presentation by Simon. This system, which is also then uh, on the back side of this uh, big issue of soft matter, and the question is if this system can be addressed or used as a kind of uh, optical addressed memory. But it's, I think it's quite difficult to realize this experience in such a precise way. So let me just uh, spend maybe five, five uh, last minutes uh, uh, on uh, this topic of, of the droplets, but it's not 
important explanations uh, also recently simulated uh, by David Sage and Simon. And uh, yeah, so the study has some history behind, so they were studied quite a long time ago already. And uh, now we have seen that these discriminations were preferentially dominantly stabilized by a geometrical arrangement of particles and by boundary conditions of the surface anchoring uh, on the particles and on the substrates. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, actually, we can induce higher chirality by adding some dopants, so to, to, to twisted or higher automatic field inside spherical geometry. And uh, this can lead us actually to the formation of uh, yeah, also complex three entangled discriminations inside. And these are just uh, pictures from this polygon's work, where, where he was also studying similar structures. But at that time, of course, it was not possible to simulate uh, the droplets so well. Uh, okay, uh, so. What you can have is, the first case is that you have the generated planar anchoring uh, on the spherical surface and it's a look at what happens inside. And in this case you can obtain six metastable rotational profiles, only four were known before and two more were just calculated uh, by David with his simulations. You can check this paper and also what's on the cover of another soft matter uh, issue. And uh, of course, these defects which happen here, they can have different symmetry. They can usually you're dealing with this uh, uh, how discriminations or integer discriminations, which can be winding one around the other inside. And uh, these structures were also so experimental, so without a problem. Uh, the other thing is if you impose on the tropic anchoring. Uh, then study what happens if you are changing uh, so the, the relation between the parameter of the droplet and the pitch which we are imposing here. And uh, what you can get is that you get some kinetically flat estimations, so which is tangling around. And uh, of course, if you do uh, the relaxation to the so more stable states, you find out that uh, more stable structures are uh, more symmetric. So you have like just three, three loops sitting here. It's just uh, the best option. And if you're varying actually this uh, pitch and parameter relation, and doing again uh, phase transitions of the thermal branching of the system. Uh, what they discovered is that so you can get uh, also not the structure inside the drop. For example, a tree ball, so if you relax it or simplify it in a geometric way, you can find out that in this case you're dealing with tree balls, and there are some more examples of linked structures. For example, you can, it can happen that two disclinations are entangling along inside the droplet and they are linked in different ways, so this is somehow what was possible to get out of the simulations. Uh, of course, if you if you are reducing the, the size of uh, your pitch more and more, you are ending up with with two types which are just winding close to the surface of the droplet, and you get kind of a uniform layered structure um, with yeah, compact spacing of discriminations in this way or in a little bit more king way so it resembles a little bit smacking uh, uh, kings and uh, it's a really dedicated balance between the uh, profit radius and uh, pitch parameter so only in a short uh, range you can be able to achieve some of the discriminations otherwise you have to go to some Okay, so let me conclude. I hope that uh, during all this my talks you got some uh, insight into 
different kind of defect structures which can be realized actually by using colloidal particles and enzymatic liquid crystal. And that's actually sharing of this deformation field and uh, defect, topological defects which have to happen next to immersed objects uh, are somehow the crucial uh, to, to mediate possible interactions between these particles and to obtain some more uh, organized uh, structures. We have seen also that this delocalized discrimination lines somehow provide uh, mm -hmm. very strong string like blank binding and also topological entanglement if you are using the, uh, larger arrays of particles and that this external parality of the liquid crystal tissue and stabilizes such structures and also it can perform the change in the nature of colloidal interactions. We have seen actually kind of universal mechanism how to obtain arbitrary number of knots and links relatively easily in a microscopic level. So we realize for experimentally and this is I think one of the rare systems where you really have uh, very good control of what what you want to get. And it can be applicable also I think to the other kind of uh, small filaments, just if you can manipulate them uh, precisely enough. And there are also many methods of differential geometry and uh, also kind of graph theory, combinatorics involved in the interpretation of all these uh, uh, results. So we hope somehow also that some of these uh, structures can, be, can find some application also just about this topological playground. So at the end, I would like just to thank again to, to my co workers. Associations for, for support. And this is just a photograph when, uh, from the Stefan Institute when we have an important visit because the President of the Republic of Slovenia was coming actually to congratulate us for, for the science paper <laughs> which was published at that time. And it was kind of an unexpected uh, occasion. Okay, so thank you. doing this rewiring, is it somewhat of a random whether you can get a certain configuration or is it well controlled? Okay, if you, if you practice this uh, long enough, you will find out that it's, it can be controlled in a way. So if you want to make a crossing in between the particles, you need to apply a little bit stronger uh, light pulse. So you have to increase the intensity. And reduce it quickly just to, to make it happen. But in the other two cases, so where you have this bypassing of the strands, it helps if you pull <laughs> your laser beam, so during turning it off actually, or just reducing the intensity uh, in, in a preferred direction where you want that this uh, indeed the clients uh, tend to happen. So this mechanical motion helps to, to get uh, what kind of thing we want to. So I can